Hello, my name is Marcos Rocha and I'm a cinematographer based in the Bay Area of California. I film mostly corporate and commercials and a little bit of documentaries. Over the years, I found that I love working with lights and perfecting the image. Therefore, the type of work I prefer is more precise. As far as camera goes, I've used almost all the brands out there. However, I'm really digging my C camming too because it works beautifully with the Ninja 5. I'm able to record 12-bit ProRes RAW straight into the Ninja 5, which is an awesome feature when you need dynamic range and you want to push the color grade. Regardless of the camera I'm using, the Ninja 5 is my go-to monitor because it's a perfect size and it has all the features I need in a monitor. The touchscreen lets me quickly turn on zebras, false colors, my favorite, uh, false colors by far, uh, peeking and zooming in to make sure I'm in focus is actually much faster to do so in my Ninja 5 than it is to do on the Z cam. Also, every camera has slightly different false color color codes. For example, the Z cam has completely different color codes compared to other cameras I've used. So for simplicity, I stick to the Ninja 5 false colors. If you look closely, you can see the numbers labeled within the color code, which is super useful for quickly gauging exposure. I have different setups I use with this monitor. I keep it very simple and I only use the absolute necessary items. That way it's easier to move around. This is usually how I rig up my camera. I'm using a combination of small rig and Nitsi parts. As you can see, I have three different handles, two on the side and one on the top. This gives me plenty of options as to how I want to hold the camera when going handheld. Everything has quick release NATO adapters in case I need to remove a handle or strip down the camera entirely. Other accessories I might put on this camera are things like uh, a map box. I have different filters, four by five filters, and also a follow focus. If we take a look at the back, what I'm using here is uh, for the Zcam is an FX Lion uh, adapter to turn the Sony MPF to V mount. And then with the V mount, I can turn on power both the monitor and the camera and I can check the battery levels on the side of the V-mount. And it's very easy for me to swap these out. I would say 98 hour is the minimum you wanna, you wanna have on here. If you go with, uh, let's say like 45 or 50 watt hour V-mounts, those run out very fast. Uh, so it's good to have a couple of these if you're rigging up your camera like this. When I'm on a gimbal, it's very easy for me to mount the Ninja 5 because it's not too heavy and not too big. It's way easier to hit record on the Ninja 5 than it is to do so on the Zcam. When I record into the Ninja 5, always tie into HDMI connections. I have a small red cage on the Zcam and it comes with this piece that locks in the HDMI cable. Then on my Ninja 5 monitor, I have the Nitsi cage that also lets me lock in the HDMI so it doesn't accidentally get knocked loose during recording. The other thing about having a monitor cage is that it protects the monitor from getting banged up, but you can also throw on the sun hood when you are filming outside. When I'm on a tripod, which is 90% of the time, I can quickly mount it to the top of my camera without adding much weight. Actually, this year I worked with a DP and he brought his seven inch Inferno monitor, but he ended up using my Ninja 5 because it was lighter and easier to move around with the different tripod and gimbal rigs we were using. When you're filming 12 hours straight, every pound on the camera counts. We ended up using uh, the DP 7-inch Inferno as the director's monitor. The DP was also impressed and he said he would totally buy the Ninja 5 except it did not have the SDI output for the type of cameras he's using. At the time, I did not own the SDI expansion module, but this is what's great about the Ninja 5. You can add these modules if you need them. Since I work with different cameras, some have SDI, some don't, I always prefer to use SDI whenever possible. Now, I also run a YouTube channel, which means I have to film myself like I'm doing right now. And this is the monitor I use. I trust what I see. I can turn on false colors, again, my favorite, load in my LUTs and monitor my audio. Overall, I would say this is a versatile monitor. I use it in all my video shoots and it fits beautifully in my camera bag. All right, if you have any questions or if you want to follow me, the best place to do so is on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching my Atomos Rig video. For more videos like these, head over to atomosacademy.com.